Weekend Warfare damage and health. Juggernaut and stopping power are restricted. It's normal team deathmatch. Have I played this before? I feel like I have. So it's team deathmatch, but just not two perks. I guess in general, it just takes longer to kill people. Okay. Wait, none of my classes work. God damn it. Can I just use the default thing here then? I think this is just gonna be a shit ton of hit markers. It's gonna be as if everybody has Juggernaut anyway, right? I mean, I took a burst from an M16, so that's good. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh, this is awful. I think you most definitely have to hit the upper chest in order to kill somebody. Because that's upper chest. Anywhere under upper chest is you, you can't wait. <laughs> huh. Maybe that's because it was a shoulder? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's as if everybody has Juggernaut on now. This is the same thing, Wendell. You literally did a hit marker game mode. This is obviously geared towards more, you know, not snipers, but this is... Uh... Yep, I'm out of here. It reminds me of the private matches that you would play with your friends, just like fucking around, just messing with settings, and you find the double health option. It'll be a funny game mode since we're already implementing really stupid shit. You might as well just make a headshot only mode. I mean, you guys already have the option for it, so it's not like you need to go out of your way to do some special shit. I mean, what's the, what's the difference? <gasps> Woo! I was reading a text message. I got a lot of shit going on, okay? People to talk to. I'm not used to this. I'm a little big boy. This fucking guy. I wonder if I put on exclusion zone if this guy will start picking it up. Wait, he did switch to a sniper rifle. It worked. Well, I got a whole bunch of stuff going on. A couple of the things I can't really talk about right now, but there's stuff that I'm doing that I need to, because it's just gotta happen. How situation, it's kind of at a stalemate right now. Everything's not going as smoothly as it should. But I mean, that's expected, I, whatever. But everybody's getting their own G Fuel flavors. God damn it, where's my G Fuel flavor? What would you even name a Jev Energy drink? Rage, Rage Berry. Fucking everything is something berry. What's the Jeb doesn't go with anything. Some people are saying like Jeb jam. Why would you drink jam? A lot of people want to use my name in there like tropical rain and lemonade. Nade shots thing is like the best. It's, it's so good. But you can also have things similar to like how Apex's flavor. I think it's what strawberry shortcake or whatever. It's not out yet, but all the short jokes coming along, even though he's not as short as everybody makes him out to be. I'd probably just go with a flavor that's just called rage. I don't know what the flavor would be like, but I think it'd be a flavor like it punches you in the mouth. It's angry, but it's not like drinking hot sauce or something. That'd be disgusting. I and mean, who knows? The people over at G Fuel fuck around a lot. They said that I was going to get a ramen flavor. Obviously, they're joking, but there's probably plenty of people that took that seriously. The internet, something else. After Jeffer 3 coming out soon, looking around at houses, it's not going so well now. I know a lot of people are going to be like, yo, what happened? You know, the last time you were talking about it, you were like, yeah, we're on the verge of getting this and all this other shit. And things can turn south so fucking fast, it's actually disgusting. Because, okay, I know a lot of you guys that watch my videos are like younger, so you've never bought a house before. And some of you have, and you've been through it. So you're gonna understand what I'm talking about. But there is so much more bullshit that goes into buying a house than like you can even realize. Like besides all the little shit where it's just like you gotta buy this and you gotta buy this little thing. It, it's it's how it's how all of these things are done and all of the process and the entire process that it takes to actually get a hold of it. That makes it ten times more stressful than it really should be. So one of these things that you do in a house is uh when you put an offer on it, they have to accept it, right? And after they accept it and you get into talks and there's contracts and all this other, you know, crazy shit, and you can get attorneys and lawyers or whatever the fuck involved and whatever and they start negotiating contracts and all that Oh, I went for it anyway. Fuck it. So after all the contracts and stuff go through, you set up a date for a home inspection. So we ended up going back to the house and then there was this whole home inspection thing and these people come in and they test for all sorts of shit that could be wrong with it. It takes multiple hours, two, three, possibly, you know, four hours, depending on all the things that they're looking for and the size of the house and all this other stuff obviously would change depending on, you know, if you're buying a fucking mansion from like a smaller house or something, you know, obviously the home inspection would take longer. But we go through this whole home inspection. So then they came back to me at the end of the whole thing and they were like, okay, this is all that's wrong. They printed it all out. They also have it like all documented written down and everything and it was like 32 pages of issues that they found now, that's a pretty crazy amount of things that are wrong with the house but i was like okay i mean if a lot of them are fixable things or things that you know isn't gonna have my house fucking you know explode or fall into the ground within the next five years then it's fine then the things were explained and there was like some crazy water damage or some bullshit going on there was like some black mold or some crazy bullshit going on underneath of the house and the house didn't have the uh the soil graded away from the house so all the water just kind of sits on the foundation and even if they did 
graded away from everything, it doesn't guarantee that this water damage will stop. And I ain't about to buy a house and then do this whole project shit where I have to fix the whole thing up and spend so much money. You guys already know how I am with money. I don't like spending it to begin with. I can fix a few things here and there, like if a fucking washer or dryer or if a furnace or some shit is old and it needs to be replaced or something like that, fine. But I'm not about to get a house where I'm worried about falling into a fucking sinkhole within three years. Now, the thing is, I know like a whole bunch of people will be asking like a whole bunch of more questions in depth and everything, but basically the people refuse to fix a lot of the things. But even though they're obligated to fix all the water damage and shit like that shit, even like for future sales for them, there's still no guaranteeing even if it's fixed that it won't happen again, you know? So it's better to just find a house that doesn't have these issues. I liked one of these houses a little bit better anyway. But also there's a little bit of luck that happened. I don't know if that's gonna completely go through. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself again. But one of the first houses that I ever looked at was one that I really, really liked, but we didn't end up getting because it was like some sort of bidding war or something because the house is really nice and it's like, it's not expensive for what it is, which is kind of a scary thing, but we'll figure it out once the home inspection happens, I guess. I mean, they're not gonna be able to find ghosts or something. I mean, like I said, once I get the house, I'll find out if it's haunted or not, I guess. It's not like significantly cheaper or some shit like that, but for everything that it provides, it's cheaper than like the other houses that I looked at. I've looked at so many fucking houses. I've grown up in a house with my grandparents my entire life, so everything is a little bit more, you know, old style. I guess being around it my entire life, I kind of just want a little bit of a different feel to a house, I guess. So I like the more modern side where like, you know, I don't know, I like things to look a little bit more clean. Not exactly like a hospital clean, but clean. Turns out after that whole thing fell through and we started looking for more houses, we saw that this house that we originally lost out on actually came back up on the market because the person that actually got their offer accepted bailed out on it like we did. So now we have a chance to go back at this house again. There's just something about this house that I looked at before that I really, really like. At least now, hopefully I get a fair shot at it. This health and damage weekend warfare mode just it's fucking. Maybe if you don't snipe or whatever, maybe it's okay. I don't know. I imagine it being kind of like Black Ops 1 where it takes maybe like four or five bullets to kill people, which I'm actually a fan of. I like being able to take more bullets instead of dying within two bullets instantly. But at the same time, the sniper rifles don't have stopping power, so you just get a disgusting amount of hit markers. But hey, don't let me stop you from trying it if you even play the fucking game anymore. I feel like 80% of you don't anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter. You're actually spared. Anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. My most recent videos are popping up on the screen here. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and uh, yeah, it's been Jeb, guys. Later.